Yeah, so I'm Justin Boone. Um, I do a lot of things, but uh, I'm an all-around creative. Uh, my passion and where I feel like I'm called is is all uh, within the world of like style uh, and a little fashion. I think there's a difference between the two, but uh, definitely style. I feel like I've been given gifts um, to be able to articulate my creativity through my style. And from there, uh, doors have just opened for me to be able to help others, um, to design clothing for myself, um, and to storytell first and foremost. Um, and I think that is like where I feel like I'm being led into more and more. It's like being able to storytell. And as much as I can do that through clothing, I also want to do it through other outlets as well too. That's right. Yeah. So let's go back. Um, how everything started? I know you're a photographer. Now you're doing styling. Yeah. Um, so, you want the long version or the short version? <laughs> go, go long, man. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, it all started, my mother is a, is a costume designer for film and television. So, that's where I say I got my original, like, that's like the birthplace of any and everything creative for me. Right. Um, she uh, is, my, is one of my best friends as well. Like, you know, her and I have a really close relationship. Um, but, so that's where that all started. Um, I was an athlete growing up, so I, I didn't really, like the whole style and fashion thing was like something that just kind of came naturally. Like she didn't push it on me, she just, you know, bought me cool clothes, or, but allowed me to also have my own opinion. And it started for me in college, like, because that was, all of high school I had a uniform. Um, so college is where I really started to be like, oh, like, okay, this is like, this is cool, like I can do something with this. And it started with Tumblr. So I got on the Tumblr and I started just seeing like outfit pictures. And then Instagram came upon and then I was seeing what people were doing through Instagram in like the similar way. And I was like, okay, like I feel like I can have a voice in this because I was already starting to tap into my own style and what that meant for me. And then um, because of Instagram and Tumblr and seeing that, okay, people are showcasing their outfits and their likings through photos, how can I also do this for myself? So then I got a camera for Christmas one year or my birthday, one of the two. Um, and it just like started from there. So I learned to take pictures. I started with like a street style aesthetic. Um, and I would like to literally set up a tripod and like take photos of myself. It takes forever doing that, obviously. So then I had to like, uh, so then I met a friend in college, him and I kind of bounced off of each other. He would take my photos, I would take his photos. We were kind of like almost equals in a way. And then I just started growing more and more. Shout out to Dwayne, I wanna say that. Yeah, shout out to, to Dwayne Baker. Uh, we still follow each other now. He has a clothing brand and all this stuff. I think he lives in North Carolina, but um, anyway. Yeah, so we started that journey together. And then I moved to Atlanta. Um, and that's where like it really kind of took off for me. And once I moved to Atlanta, it was like, okay, I no longer dropped out of school, moved to Atlanta, and I no longer had like Dwayne with me. So I was like, okay, how can I keep doing this? And I started to focus more on just doing photography because nobody took the pictures of me that I wanted to, like how I wanted them. So I was like, well, let me just take pictures of other people. Right. So I did that, kept, you know, getting dressed. I started working in the film industry with my mom, and that's why I ended up moving to Atlanta, and that's kind of like what started my whole journey. And then, yeah, now I'm here. <laughs> so how in the, how you end up in New York City? Oh, so I was living in Atlanta and, you know, being as um, interested in style as I was and being in the States, New York is the best place to, you know, for that to thrive and for you to feel heard in that sense. Atlanta is very big on film and, and on music and... I was already in the film space. I had no interest interest in music and, you know, in the way of like creating my own music or being in that world. So uh, New York was always like something that was on my heart. And I started to visit, started getting connected with people through Instagram. Shout out to Jackson, shout out to Alex. Uh, there's like my first friends here in the city, They're still friends to this day. Um, and yeah, I started like coming to New York, hanging out with like, you know, the people who I felt were my peers, people that were cool, people that were down to earth. Um, and I was just like traveling back and forth, like Atlanta, New York, New York, Atlanta, Atlanta, New York. 
And then um, I actually didn't move here until two years ago. So this is all still very recent for me. Um, and I don't know, when I first came to New York, I, I kind of had this like feeling I know it was of God, but it was just like even more so like just a thought or a desire. I was like, man, I feel like I'm gonna find my wife here. Like I feel like my wife lives in New York. Like wow. just because I knew that like creatively I was so fulfilled here. And I was like, I don't think I'm gonna find anybody anywhere else that's gonna like be as creative and as driven as I am. And then um through uh my best friend Aaron, who is dating my friend Regan, uh, I was introduced to my wife Telsha. Um we met and then this was like, this was pre-pandemic. We were supposed to meet in person at her store opening because she owns a store, a boutique here in New York called TA. And, uh, and then the pandemic hit. So we were all digital for like six months or so, three months. And then she was like, I can't do this anymore. And then, you know, I ended up going to New York to spend some time with her and then the rest was history. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. So man. it all moved very, very fast. And like, I said this in like one of my last Instagram posts and, and uh, from a YouTube video that I did. But um, as we're talking about it, it's like starting to actualize my mind even more is that like so much has changed in my life within the span of two years. And like I've been using that as like just kind of encouragement to know that like two years from now, who knows what will happen. Um, and it's been such like two years is such a short time and but it feels like a long time you know like when you're talking about two years from now it feels like forever but when you think about two years ago it's like wow that was like yesterday you know but still so much has changed within that time um so yeah that's how I got to New York and that's how I am here and unfortunately we're leaving (laughs) wow so (laughs) now going going back in in time how do you end up being like uh going into the Christianity part of it, faith. Mm. Like, how did that play that into everything that you're doing now? Yeah, so um, I grew up in a home where both my parents were, they're married, they're believers. um, And me being as close to my mother as I am, she was the one that really, not taking any credit from my dad, but like, she was the one that really was like ingraining the word in me. Um, reminding me of things, right. um, you know, kind of showing me, walking me through the word uh, as often as possible. Um, so that's where that all started. It was like family for me. And then, you know, as we all know, like you have to take the journey on your own as well. Mm-hmm. Like it's not something that somebody else can lead you through entirely. It, it has, there has to come to a point where you have to make the decision yourself. And I made that decision in college. Um, I went to two different colleges. So when I was talking about the school that I met Duane at, that was um, Salisbury University in Maryland. But before that, I went to Eastern University, and that's in like Pennsylvania, close to Villanova. Okay. Um, it's like a small like Christian school. Um, and I think that's where like my life changed because I went there to that school, and that is where I myself feel like I had my first encounter with Jesus. And it wasn't like, it was crazy for me, but it wasn't like this, like, this, like, church moment. It was really, it was really more communal, where, like, we were doing, um, we were having, like, I guess we call it, like, small group. That's right. We weren't calling it small group, but that's basically what it was. It was just, like, a bunch of friends hanging out. And um, I don't remember what we were talking about. I don't remember how it happened, but we all ended up praying. And, like, I'm in the circle. We're all holding hands praying. And, like, it got to my turn to pray. And, like, you know, I prayed. And then as soon as it was done, I, like, ran out. Like, literally left. Wow. Like, I walked out because I was just, like, overwhelmed with all this, like, emotion. And, like, I just felt, like, God's presence on me. That's right. And, like, all these things were beginning to, like, actualize for me. And, like, I just remember, like, um, the house that we were in or the it's like an on-campus apartment. The on-campus apartment that we were in was like really close to the soccer field, and I was on the soccer team at, at this school. So like, I um, I like ran out and like went to the soccer field and just like started bawling my eyes out, bro. I was just like crying full on, like just like releasing, and like in that moment I was like, God, I want to like do this for real. Like I want to give you my life, and um, it's making me emotional right now. Um, 
yeah, I had that moment and I was just like, yeah, this is like what feels real and what feels right for me. Um, and I can't say I never turned back because I've, I've definitely, you know, uh, gone astray a little bit um, between now, between then and now. But I always, I, I'm like, it's always him. Like, mm. It's always God, bro. And I've always, like, I've learned through my journey and through my life to, like, there's nothing that's going to satisfy me other than putting him first. Wow. And everything that I do. And, I, and I've, you know, I've, I've done, I've done everything. Like, you know, I've, I've smoked, um, you know, I still drink, but, like, you know, I was turning to alcohol. Like, I was never, like, addicted to any of it, but. I was doing everything, like, you know, hanging out with, I don't want to say the wrong group of people, but like hanging out with people that were influencing my lives in other ways, you know, partying and doing all those things. And it's funny as I tell my best friend, Aaron, I tell him to this day, I was like, if I would have moved to New York single, my life probably would have been completely different wow. because of how easily you can be consumed by the city and the things. And a lot of my friends, um, aren't necessarily believers um but we just you know we still have a lot of commonalities you know we're people at the end of the day uh but i i can see how i would have been influenced to do or to participate in certain things That's right. um so I, I definitely say like god saved me with being here through my wife for sure wow because with me being in relationship is what keeps me like grounded because i have somebody else that i'm doing something for that's right you know that's how it should be with god but i think he did that for me through my wife wow you know and like keeping that as a reminder that like all right bro you're not about to be on these streets so you got a wife like you know what i'm saying <laughs> that's right that's right so you know I, I gotta think for somebody else other than myself wow. and that's what's kept me in it but yeah that's you know that's how i got to where i am and i think that you know, God placed on my heart, my, my clothing brand is called David and Goliath. And he placed that on my heart in like 2016, I think. I feel like 20, yeah, like 2016, 2017. And it's been a slow journey, but um, I know that that is something that I'm supposed to do. And being in that is also supposed to, he's going to use me and use David and Goliath to, you know, obviously advance his kingdom some more. But, um, yeah, for me, I, I'm just always looking to include him in everything. And it's been very important in my journey so far. It's like, it's like what they say, um, when you're in love with something, you can't help but share it. That's right. You know? Mm -hmm. So I think that, like, because I love my relationship with, with God and with Jesus so much, like, I can't help but share it in every aspect. Wow. So if I'm going to be, if I'm going to do a clothing brand, like, I have to include him in it. Yeah. You know? If I'm going to be a photographer, I have to include him in it. If I'm going to do this, this, and then, like, I have to find ways to include him in it. Or else the action of doing something will consume me and not the why. Yeah. So, so now, uh, how do you think God has been uh, speaking to you and making this clear for you as far as, like, the purpose that you have in your life? How do you encourage somebody else uh, that's pursuing their dreams to actually... Uh, have that crystal clear um, purpose in their life. How do you how do you like have come to this place right now that you are at as far as like you know doing fashion, doing uh, creative direction? Uh, how all of this has become clear to you? Hmm. My first response is that. Chasing the clarity, I think, will always l leave us a little um, unsatisfied. Mm. Because so much of walking with God is unclear. That's right. So I think that, like, the more we focus on, like, I just want this clear. This I just want everything to be clear. I want everything to, like just be written plain. God doesn't work like that. Mm. So for me, what's kept me grounded is like when I felt he spoke to me about what I was supposed to be doing, holding on to that. 
until he gives me direction for the next thing. That's right. And the direction is not always clear. How I'm supposed to do is not always clear. Uh, But doing it, there's always a, a piece with it. You know, there's always like a everything that I've done with David and Goliath, everything that I've done with anything in my life, honestly, has always been covered. Mm. Like, gratefully, I've never been in a place where I've like been homeless. I've never been in a place where I've been without things that I need. That's right. And the word always promise, and the word promises us that we'll always have what we need. Like, if you put God first, you always have what you need. You may not always get what you want. That's right. You may not always, I mean, because Lord knows I want a million plus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If we're talking finances and, you know, I want a brand on the billboards and all that stuff. That's right. But that's not what I need right now. So I think to answer the question is like, I, the only thing that is keeping the vision clear for me is holding on to what he told me when he told it to me and the feeling that was associated with that. I mean, we're not supposed to just move off of our feelings, but like, you know, we can feel when right. God's presence is here. So yeah. I think like just holding on to that and knowing that when it's time, he'll tell me when it's time to do something else. That's right. And he's given me, you know, he's given me direction or he's given me more ideas and things like that for other things, which is why I say, like, I know it's not just style involved. I know it's not just the clothing brand. There's so many more things that he wants to do in my life. But, um, yeah, I know, like, right now is, like, focus on that. And then he's going to use that to open up doors for other things. So that's, I believe that that's how God works. Like, he gives us, I, I feel as though, like, our purpose is always the same. He just calls us to things at different times. Mm. So for a season of my life, photography is what he called me to. And I did it. And then it opened, like, so many doors for me, bro. That's right. To build a relationship with people. To even be interested in coming to New York. And then my style has now gotten me... My personal style has gotten me opportunities to work in the film industry. My understanding of that has gotten me opportunities to meet and have relationship with other people that are of high scale and people that are normal. And it's like, so it's like everything that God calls us to is going to have, there's always stepping stones. So it's like, and and one thing I, I also always try and remind myself and say is that like, I, I try not to hold on too tightly to any one thing that God's called me to, Mm. because I know that, at any season, he could ask me to do something different. Wow. So it's like if he told me tomorrow, if he told me today at the end of this podcast, you know, David and Goliath's like, we're good off that. Like, we're going to the next thing. I'd be like, okay. I'll still keep making clothes, but I'll just do it for myself. That's right. You know, it won't be a brand. It won't be something that I'm trying to sell to people. It'll just be, I make all the clothes that I wear. Mm. And if he was like, you know, this is what you're going to be doing the rest of your life, I'd be like, Sick, okay. You know what I mean? So I think that, yeah, like as long as we try not to hold on to any one thing too tightly, then that's where the clarity also comes into play. Because then you're always, then your ear is always open to what he could be asking you or calling you to do next. Mm. So, yeah. Now that's beautiful, man. I love that you have this posture of just laying everything down. Mm for whatever he wants you to call and what, whatever he wants you to do. Mm. Uh, that reminds me of Matthew 6, 33, mm-hmm. which is just seek the kingdom and he will just provide anything that you want. Yeah. And man, it's just encouraging for me that you're willing to lay your dreams down for whatever he's calling you to do. Yeah. And actually it kind of like, it's refreshing as well. It takes all the pressure out of you mm-hmm. and it puts it on him. Mm-hmm. So it's, that's, I mean, it's, well, first thing, I, I love that you brought up that verse because I literally just texted my wife last week and I was like, this is going to be the verse that our family stands on. Wow. So like for you to say that just now, I was like, wow. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, you know, it's not always easy to do that though. Like 
having the posture. This conversation is reminding me wow. of where my focuses need to be. Mm. Because like, like, I, like we talked about a little off camera, like, and even just now, like, she's pregnant, we're moving. That's right. Um, all that stuff's expensive. Mm -hmm. I'm trying not to work in the film industry anymore because I don't feel as though I'm, I don't know, I'm always torn because like, I don't want to, my, my heart's desire is to be with my family. That's right. And I know that my son, I'm having a son by the way, it was sick. Yes. Um, my, my son is, will be here in a couple months. Wow. So it's like, I never wanted to, I never had this picture in my mind of like not being with my family as much as possible. Wow. And the film industry, honestly, like doesn't provide opportunity for that. So through that, I've been like, I don't want to work in the film industry anymore. Right. So like the decision to move away from that has been, is difficult. Like, so it's always like keeping, it's funny because like the word is so encouraging in so many ways and as is that verse, but it's still like, it's still hard to do. Of course. To remind yourself of. Like, I've been battling, like, these past two or three weeks, like, with this, just the mentality of, like, okay, just keep God first, keep God first, keep God first. Everything is going to, like, everything's going to work out. Just got off the phone with my tax guy two days ago. It's <laughs> like, this is how much you owe. And I'm like, Jesus, like, <laughs> another thing. It's like. My move is expensive. My taxes just came back and I owe X amount. Like, we got to get a car when we get to L.A. So I'm just, like, going through all these motions and all these things that are happening. I'm just like, all right, God, your word says keep you first. Seek the kingdom first and all things will be provided to you. That's right. So I'm like, I'm going to keep seeking you. But it's not the easiest answer because as humans our innate response when responsibility comes up is, okay, what do I do to, f to solve this problem? That's right. What do I do? Like, we're just constantly like, okay, how can I do this? How can I, how can I, what can I do to make more money? What can I do to uh, keep the lights on? What can I do to make sure I have X amount to go on this vacation? What can I do in order to, get my brand off the ground. Yeah. What can, and it's like, that verse is such a good reminder because it's like, it only requires us to do one thing. And it's to seek his kingdom first. Exactly. And that's because he will tell us everything that needs to happen mm -hmm. in order for us to get what it is that we need and what we want. So, it, but there's no easy way of like going about that. Nah, that's fire, man. I felt like, uh, somebody somebody told me this, and um, one day without Jesus, and then one day with Jesus, it's easier to live one day with Jesus. That's true. Than without Him. So, That's facts. Um, yeah, man, it simplifies everything. And going back into the whole creative uh, inspiration part of who you are, uh, where do you grab inspiration from? Mm, I really grab inspiration from everyday life. Like, there's, it's funny because. Somebody asked me this a couple weeks ago, I think. I don't remember who it was, but they were just like, uh, who are your, like, who are your male stylists? And I'm just like, I don't think I have any. Wow. <laughs> like, I have people's style that, like, I enjoy. Yeah. But there's nobody that's like, man, I can't think about what I want to wear. Okay, let me go look at it. I don't have that person. Right. So I think for me, it, it's just everyday life. Like... Right now, I'm heavily inspired, I think, by, like, I think it's, like, skateboard and surf culture. I can't even really put a finger on what I'm inspired by right now. That's it's, right. like, a mix between, like, skateboarding, surfing. I love, like, how actors dress off camera most times. Um, and what I'm realizing is just, like, I just love everyday people. And what I'm and where that's coming from is that like I'm I'm finding that like comfort and function are top tier for me right now mm. like I, I don't want to put on anything that's not functional and comfortable wow meaning that like 
everything that I'm currently wearing right now and everything that like I'm looking at in my closet, I want to be able to wipe my hands on. I want it to look better the, the longer I have it Sorry. without me having to dry clean it or wash it every week. Mm. Like, I mean, I don't know. Vans are like one of my favorite pairs of shoes. Like, it just comes down to like like that. Like, I don't, I don't want to have to care for my clothing. Mm. I care about clothing. It's just what's naturally in me. But I don't want to have to care for it so specifically. Whereas though, uh, I, like I can only get like one or two wears out of this before I got to take it to the dry cleaners. Like, right. or I, I like, ah oh, man, I just got finished eating, but I don't have a napkin. Right. Like. It could sound childish to some people. It could sound like dirty to somebody. But for me, it's just like I would love to like everything that I I wear and I do is like I would love to be able to because I skateboard at any given moment. I want to be able to go hop on my skateboard. Yeah. Whether I plan on it or not. So that's kind of how I, I think about. And that's what I'm inspired by right now. Like. If, I, if we were eating some some hummus or some right. some a bag, a bag of chips, I could, yeah. you know, and keep going. I think about it, but if I was in like, you know, Rick or Dries or something that's silk or like, it's just like, I have to be careful. Yeah, and I don't want to have to be careful with my clothing anymore. Wow. Um, so that's where my inspiration comes from. That's where like my design aesthetic comes from. I'm really big on heritage brands, brands that like I mentioned like just look better over time, like Double RL, Ralph Lauren, uh, Greg Lauren, wow. Levi's, Carhartt, um, just brands that are built with a purpose. And that purpose, nine times out of 10, is f- for the clothing to last. This Vim, Capital, like brands that just aren't really moving with any trends, that are more so just, they just, keep designing kind of the same thing yeah but with just subtle differences and because they know that like okay a good pair of jeans isn't going anywhere yep you know make them with a flare make them straight leg make them a little baggy like i just want if you could look at my closet right now because a lot of my stuff a lot of our stuff is already left to go to la um but if you look at what i chose to keep i have like six pairs of jeans a couple other pairs of pants but like the majority of the style of pant I chose I cho- chose to kept for these next few months that I'm here is jeans. Like mm. I just love stuff that's functional. So it's a long winded answer, but I, I'm not really inspired by much outside of just regular life. Wow. Yeah. Like, uh, what will be one brand that you are really looking forward to work with, or you actually grab inspiration from? One brand that I'm really, really looking forward to working with um, that I have an opportunity to do so in the near future without saying too much is um, Greg Lauren. I'm a really big fan of Greg's work. I have been for a long time. And um, him and I have begun to uh, explore, you know, a relationship of some sorts. Um, Like he gifted me a couple of of pieces uh, like a month or two ago. And that for me was like, bro, what? Like, Greg Lauren just like personally sent me some stuff? This is crazy. Um, So yeah, like through another opportunity, I I am looking forward to uh, working with him right now and just kind of getting an idea of what it's like to operate a clothing brand on a larger scale. Wow. Um, I think my goal right now and it always has been, but my goal right now is to just learn as much as possible before I do anything. Like, I've already started my brand, obviously, and I have products that are out. But um, my biggest thing has always been learning as much as possible. And I'm in a space right now where, like, all I want to do is learn. Mm. And if I can learn from somebody like Greg on what it means to build a business and to build a clothing brand, but to be able to stay authentic to your design aesthetic and everything is is where I want to be. So that's what I'm looking forward to the most right now. And now, uh, where do you see you see yourself in the next three years and five years? Three years and five years. 
three years from now, my son will be three years old. Crazy. Um, Fun fact, I love that you're thinking about your son already. Oh, for within sure. Within the purpose, within the dreams. For sure. The fact that you're including your family is is beautiful. Like, I, you know, I, I, I was serious. Like, I really, I just, I want to be able to do everything with my family. Wow. I feel that I'm the most grounded and the least distracted when I'm with my family. Wow. Like, if Tosh was here, she'd probably laugh at that because she feels like I'm never home. But it's because I'm just, like, in grind mode so that I can do that. That's right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but, uh, like, a really strong example of that for me is um, this rapper. His name is Toby Inigwe. Okay. I hope I'm saying his last name right. Um, but I really love what he does because... He's made it clear in interviews and in statements and stuff like that, that like, if he can't bring his family, then he's not going. Wow. And I'm just like, that doesn't mean he takes his family everywhere. Yeah. But probably eight and a half out of 10 times I've seen him via social media, he has his family with him. Yeah. And he has three kids and a wife. Right. And they are with him all the time. So much so that his wife is included in the music that he does. Wow. So I'm just like, nah, that's what I want. Mm. And it's because he has that same mentality that, like, if they're not with me, then I'm going to be running amok. Like, I can't trust myself enough. Wow. And it's not that I don't trust myself enough. It's just that, like, I know that I'm better with them. My son's not even here, but I just know I'm going to be better with him. That's right. Around. That's right. I'm more focused. My time is more centered, like... So that's all I want. Wow. All I want is to like, but three years from now, um, that's a crazy question, bro. I don't even think I thought about that. Um, but I do love that you have them in mind. Um, actually, I was in the Grammys and he was there with his wife and you can tell that he's going to, he's prioritizing his family. Exactly. He's in love with his wife. Yes. He's flying all over the place. Yes. His aesthetic is completely dope. It's sick, bro. He's working. He's working with Pharrell. He's working with different artists, yes. and uh, I just love that you and him have this um, priority on family. Yeah, I, I just like. I just think that that's how God designed it. That's like, right. You know, you take it back to the beginning, and obviously, like you know, that's why God gave Adam Eve. Like, man is not good alone. Yeah. You know. So if I've been blessed with a wife and now blessed to be expecting our first child, like I think it would, I would be doing a disservice to the gift by not nurturing alongside them, you know, naturally, I think the man's role has been to go to work, go hunt, go you know, go off and let the mother take care of the, the child. and this, But, which is true, and which I still want to do, but I would love for my family to just be included in that. Like, I don't think that there's any better example than my son watching me work. Mm. You know, getting an idea of what it looks like to work. Um, so three years from now, I would love to have my own studio uh, where I'm manufacturing and designing from my clothing brand That's right. and other artistic ventures. Like I want to be able to design furniture. I want to do pottery. I want to, you know, do some canvases. Like I'm, I like, I'm really a true creative. Mm. And the thing that I'm always chasing is freedom to do that. So, yeah, my goal for three years and the two years to follow is, like, to be able to own my time and to be able to include my time with my family as much as possible. Wow. And within that time, be able to design and just create and have those things be lucrative and supportive of my family. Um, so that's three. And then two after that, I would love to be a creative director for another brand. Mm. Yeah. My big goal, I want to be a creative director at Ralph Lauren. That's amazing. Yeah, I think that'd be sick. Double RL specifically, but 
Double Arrow doesn't do fashion shows. It's always like Ralph Lauren. So right. I'd love to be able to be a creative director and like design a few collections at Ralph. That's beautiful. I think that would be sick. Wow. I'd love to do it while he's still alive. Like me, but it probably won't happen while he's living because he does everything himself. But yeah. yeah, if I can like creative direct um, a collection at Ralph, that'd be sick. Wow. Yeah. It's funny because I actually have worked with Ralph Lauren and uh, their creative direction is just completely out of this yeah. world. Yeah. I've done a couple of shows with them. And it's funny you mentioned them because I actually like, I love Ralph Lauren. Oh, so, so good. It's been, a, it's been a great journey. And then going back into your purpose, um, what will be your Ephesians 320 dream? If Ephesians 320 talks about uh, God doing exceedingly, abundantly beyond, what do you can think or imagine? What will be your ultimate dream to like achieve or happen in the career of fashion and street styles? I think I, I think I've kind of touched on it. Whereas, like, I'll lay out my my dream publicly, and then yeah, we'll see what happens. But uh, my dream, I want to have two homes. Well, maybe technically three, but two mainly. One, I want a home in Utah. Okay. And then I want a home in either Los Angeles or New York. And I want to just have like a nice size Spanish ranch style home. It's like all one level, big yard, like a bunch of acres. And I want, like I mentioned, just like freedom for mm -hmm. myself and my family to create generational wealth through the gifts that he's given me. Wow. So, like I mentioned before, I don't want to box myself into any one thing because I have aspirations to, um, you know, do a film. I have aspirations to write a book. Like, so not through any one thing. I, do I believe that, that God is going to do it? So I think with the culmination of all the gifts that he's given me and me being obedient and putting his kingdom first, I think that they're all possible. That's right. Um, but yeah, that would be my my uh, my dream of him doing exceedingly and abundantly beyond anything that I would imagine. I mean, I can imagine that. So it's like that and then whatever else he would offer. That's me, right. Yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I'm saying? That's beautiful, so, man. Yeah, I just, you know, I don't want my kids to have to worry about anything because we do want plural. Like, I I don't want my wife to worry about anything but I don't want to be stagnant. Like, I want to work. That's right. You know, but I just want us to, like, not have to worry. And the biggest worry in today's age is always financial. Yep. So, um, yeah, financial freedom, freedom in our health, mentally, emotionally, physically. And, uh, yeah, just, like, opportunities for... Not only myself, but my wife and my kids to also be able to become involved in. Of course. So it's like if I create a film and my son wants to act, put him in the movie. Um, you know. Yep. You know, if I am designing my clothing brand and my wife has an idea, okay, go ahead and do it. Like, yeah, this whole line of whatever can have your name on it. That's like, right. That type of thing, you know. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, that's why. And just the opportunity to spend time with my family as much as possible. Wow. So. And now, um, to be closing up on this pod, um, what will be a couple practical steps for somebody that's coming up in the fashion industry, in the style in industry? What will be encouraging to them as far as, like, practical things for them to do while they're coming up on the game in the fashion industry and just here in New York City? Hmm. I get this question a lot in DMs, I feel like. Um, and it changes sometimes, but I think the best thing that anybody could do that wants to get into fashion and style, uh, and this answer is consistent, is to f figure out why. Mm. Why do you want to do it? Because I believe that your why or your purpose to like bring it back to like how we started the conversation will always give you the answers for what you're going to do 
next. So you want to be a stylist, why? Wow. You want to design clothes, why? If you're able to answer that, then everything else will reveal itself to you. Because there's no one journey or way to do anything. We could have a conversation with 10 stylists sitting on this couch. And everybody's journey would be different. Yep. So with that, I have no, like, I don't have any, like, stepping stones of this is what you need to do in order to be successful at blah, blah, blah. Yep. It, it, for me, it's always why. Wow. And I think that when I realized that myself, it was like, oh, it makes so much sense. And, like, whenever I start anything, it's funny, I take it back to this, like, elementary um, uh, style of thinking and I answer the questions of who, what, when, where, why, and how. Mm -hmm. But I always make why last or first. Depends on how I'm feeling. But it's always the five W's and the, and the H. Like, yep. if you can answer all of those, then everything that you need is right in front of you. Mm -hmm. Why do you want to do something? Who are you and who are you going to do it with? What do you want to do? Where are you going to do it? And how you want to do it? Right. And when? When would, do you want to start it? And when would you like it to stop or, you know, that type of thing? So it's like, if you can sit down and answer all those questions, then that's all you need to start anything. And then you just look back at that and, it'll, and you'll be able to keep going. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. To close down, this down, Uh, how does success looks for you? Um, success for me is solely based on freedom. Okay. Yeah. I think that more than anything, that's what God wants for us is freedom. I think he, I don't think he designed us to be confined by anything. Mm other than the boundaries of his grace and his love. But when you're operating in the fullness of his grace and love, you're as free as you can be. That's right. So success for me is freedom. And for me, I've explained what freedom looks like for me, but for somebody else can mean something different. So, you know, I think success is, success in itself is a dependent variable. Like it, it's very much dependent on someone's personality and, what they like and what they want and who they are. And I don't think that that's expressed enough because we see success as being multimillionaire, cars, houses, mm -hmm. family, a pet. Right. You know, like there's this like structure that's kind of boxed in of like what success is. But everybody doesn't want that. I've met people that don't want to be married. That's right. I've met people that don't want kids. I've met people that don't care to be a millionaire. I've met people that want all of it, and I've met people that don't want any of it. And I've been able to have conversation and associate myself with different pieces of it. So for me, what I've grown to recognize and realize is that, like, success for me is just freedom. That's right. And... For me, financial freedom means X amount. Family freedom means time with time with them. You know, creative freedom means being able to try whatever comes to my mind. I don't have to succeed at it, but being able to just try it. Yeah. Like if I say tomorrow, like, man, I want to make a chair. Then to be able to just try it without thinking about the financial aspect of it or thinking about, okay, if this fails, what am I going to do? No, sorry. You know what I mean? So it's like, just freedom, bro. That's all I want. That's all I want for anybody, honestly. Mm -hmm. I just want everybody to experience freedom in whatever way that means for them. Wow. Um, and that's what I hope because I know that it's available. And there's only one way you're going to get it, but, you know. That's for everybody to figure out on their own. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Totally, man. Man, I love that. And then let's say you don't know who God is and you mm -hmm. and your journey of trying to search who, what's going on in your, um, 
in your journey you're trying to figure out who god is mm-hmm. um, what would be your encouragement for them to actually figure it out first before they're trying to step into uh, one of the biggest industries which is fashion entertainment um what would be a what would be a practical um way for you for them to figure it out before they step into this industry hmm I think the most practical or the or the best way to figure out how to walk in relationship with God within all of this is to figure out what it is he wants from you mm. within that space. Because we all like we're called to do things different things and because of that only you can do what he wants you to do so yeah there's hundreds of actors thousands of actors there's millions of artists painters and all that stuff but everybody has different callings within those spaces and there's a reason why you have the gift that you do so I think figuring out how, what, or why, going back to those good questions, yeah. um, is the easiest way and to know or to like kind of come into a realization of like, okay, how do I include God in this? Or how do I find God in anything? Or how do I do this with him? Yeah. You know, and understanding that like doing things with God it's not always easy and it's not always going to feel how it felt when you get introduced to him. Mm -hmm. Like when I was talking about the moment when I was like, no, I'm doing this for real. Like I was getting emotional, like, but I don't feel like that all the time. Of course. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel that every time I pray. I don't feel that every time I'm in church. I don't feel that every time I'm in need of something. Um, so just like recognizing and realizing that like staying true to the direction that he's giving you is how you stay closely connected to him. And if you don't know who he is at all, then the best thing to do is just have a conversation. Like if you're interested, if you're interested in you know, finding out more about God. Call this number on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, yeah, honestly, it's just like, ask a question. That's right. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. ask somebody that you feel may have some sort of direction for you. That's right. They may not have all the answers, but if they have some sort of direction, like, have a conversation. Wow. That's how everything starts, through a conversation. That's how everything we have in this world physically is from somebody having a conversation yeah and that conversation leading to the actualization of a product or a thing or a person even because to have a baby you have to have a conversation like everything is you know based on relationships so yeah that that would be my advice for for that man i love that man i love that he's near i love that he answers i love that um He's just there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I love that if you just call upon him, he will come near to you. Absolutely. The word says that when you call upon him, he comes near. Yes. Like He's available. Absolutely. And I feel like if you don't know him, you can, you just got to call upon him. Yeah. You know? That's it. Um, it helps me to go to sp- sleep in peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, is He has given me purpose. Mm-hmm. And, man, I just love the journey. It's yeah. been um, truly a rewarding one. Yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, man, thank you so much for being in this pod. No, I appreciate it. I hope it. this encourages somebody. It encourages me. Just and talking. last encouragement, anything that comes to your mind, go. Um, thank you. I love you. appreciate you. Thank you. Um, and, yeah, I hope that this is as empowering and as impactful as it has been for me to be here in this space as it is for everybody that's listening. And I just encourage everybody to um, go after what it is that you feel God has placed on your heart. That's right. Just do it. Anything that 
you feel like you have an inkling of in, of a sense that he placed on your heart to do, start start moving in that direction mm. and just see where it takes you. Like, if I'm anybody to, to talk about it, like, the way my life has changed in two years is crazy. That's right. So, and in, in a way that it's going to continue to change. So, yeah, that's uh, that's all I would say. Yeah. Awesome. 